Welcome to AP Circus. When you think about the circus, I bet this is what comes to mind. A series of incredible acts with performers from around the world gathered together in one place. Under a touring big top or in a permanent venue, you see them all. Jugglers, acrobats, aerialists, balancing acts. But have you ever wondered where it all came from in the first place? How long have the circus and various circ acts been around? In this series, we'll be looking at the history of the circus and circus acts, and when we're done, you'll be an expert. The circus had an important social function. It was used to commemorate important events in the empire. For instance, if you've ever visited the Colosseum in Rome, you know that circuses were flooded to reenact major naval battles. That means live special effects go back at least 2,000 years. They were also used for chariot races and horse races. Remember that part about horses, it's important. The circus was also a venue used to show off exotic animals, a tradition that still survives in some circuses today. Performers like jugglers and acrobats are not thought to have been part of the entertainment in Roman circuses, but those disciplines were around, at least in the West. For example, a wall painting from an ancient Egyptian tomb shows that the art of juggling existed in 2000 BCE, more than 4,000 years ago, and may have had religious significance. Minoan art from around the same time shows people performing acrobatics on the backs of bulls, so we know acrobats existed too. We'll tell you more about how these arts developed in other videos, but as we said, even if they were around, we don't think they were part of the ancient circuses. Instead, we start seeing evidence of rambling bands of troubadours and acrobats and jugglers performing throughout Europe in the Middle Ages. Now we think of circuses as moving around a lot, touring from place to place. Today, at any given time, Cirque du Soleil is on three continents. That wasn't the case in ancient Greece and Rome. However, after the fall of the Roman Empire, it sure looks like people in the West skilled at what we call circus arts were totally nomadic, performing with animal trainers at local fairs. And they were able to do it all without a GPS. And what about clowns? Clowns as tricksters or jesters probably go back to prehistory in many cultures, but we know for sure that Egypt had clown-like characters since before 2500 BCE. So jesters were always around, and clowns really hit their stride with the Commedia dell'arte in 16th century Italy, but they weren't really part of the circus, not yet. The modern circus was invented when one man pulled all these strands of history together in one place. His name was Philip Astley, and he is recognized as the father of the modern circus. Astley was a cavalry officer. On April 4, 1768, Astley opened the first modern circus in Lambeth, London. It was first and foremost a place where Astley and his company could perform trick riding on horses in a circle, a 40-foot-2 diameter ring to be precise. Remember what we said about horses? At the beginning, the circus was a lot about trick riding by former cavalry officers, which is why classic circus costumes always had a military, equestrian look. But Astley's real genius was gathering together all the other performers under one roof. The circus format was a hit. It was soon spread across Europe by Astley and others, and by the 19th century, the circus was touring North America from Montreal to Havana. The Big Top was first introduced in 1825. Freak shows had been part of the entertainment in England since the 16th century and became part of the circus too. Thankfully, by the early 20th century, the practice soon started to phase out. By the way, this is just a quick view of what was happening in Europe and North America. Many disciplines that we see in the circus today were being developed in China from as early as around 200 BCE. However, the Chinese themselves call this variety art and consider the circus a Western invention. That didn't stop the Chinese arts from making it into the circus eventually, but we'll cover that in more detail in our acts videos. And so it went, with the circus surviving the introduction of radio, the movies, and television in the 20th century. Touring circuses were filling arenas, and the old-fashioned equestrian acts were replaced by more spectacular acts of strength and daring. So bye-bye horses, and thank you for your circus. By the 1970s, circus started to reinvent itself. Starting in Australia, Canada, France, and the west coast of the US, circuses began to experiment and become more theatrical, concentrating on story, themes, characters, emotion, and lighting. In 1984, Cirque du Soleil was born and wholeheartedly embraced the spirit of experimentation and reinvention. We soon became the world's leading circus company, constantly embracing radical creativity. If the horses were gone, we didn't need cavalry uniforms and dirt on the ground anymore. The circuses could exist on a whole new range of stages with all kinds of different forms of expression. Today, Cirque du Soleil draws an exciting variety of performers and talents under its roof from all corners of the world and from all disciplines. Some of the disciplines we embrace go back 4,000 years or more, but we reinvent those too. While we bring in new arts and skills, it's a never-ending and exciting journey. Like the Greeks and Romans, court jesters and wandering performers of old, we believe we're reflecting our world and our audiences back to themselves. And after more than 33 years, we feel like we, and the circus tradition we love, still have lots of room to grow. It's a never-ending journey.